PB Shingao and Alkao Siltanboli. And uh, their winning project is uh, titled Simulation and Modeling of Piezoelectric Nanoscale Resonators for Sensing Applications, Nanobulk Acoustic Wave Resonators. So, uh, Phoebe? Yeah, so I will share my screen with you. Okay, um, so hello everyone. Um, so Kosh and me are going to present to you with our CARPA research project results on simulation and modeling of piezoelectric nanoscale resonators for sensing applications on nanobug acoustic wave resonators. So the fundamental mechanism that nanobug acoustic wave resonators employ mm -hmm. is that the sound wave interacts with matter enabling sensing. It uses the propagation of waves in a medium such as the standing wave in a resonator. The use of sound waves for imaging is well established. One successful and widely applied example is the medical ultrasound diagnosis technique. With the nanobulk acoustic wave resonators, the applications of which are carried further. So acoustic sensors are capable to achieve many tasks and applications. So here we just give some examples so it can be applied in rheology to build a rheometer to measure the way in which a liquid in response to applied force. It can also make a cost effective uh, pollution monitoring device, or it can be used to constantly monitoring the structural conditions in buildings, bridges, or any infrastructure to avoid risks of structural failure. It can also be used in the lab on chip technology to detect antibody bindings. And uh, this part we're going to um, introduce a little bit further later. Um, the wide range of successful applications of acoustic sensors made the motivation of this project, which is to develop the acoustic sensor further beyond the existing techniques. So the bulk uh, acoustic wave resonator is a type of acoustic uh, sensor and um, its basic structure is showing in the picture. It composes of two electrode layers and the piezoelectric layer sandwiched in between. So during the operation, an alternating voltage is applied on the top electric layer uh, and the bottom electrode layer is grounded. The stress is the highest at the middle layer of the structure and lower uh, on the outer layers. The stress is uh, distributed as indicated uh, in the graph. So the ability of the bulk acoustic wave resonators to measure mass changes originated in the discovery of the relation between the resonance frequency and the mass. So the relationship is shown in the formula and it was formulated in uh, 1959 uh, by Mr. Sobery. So the equation shows the shift in frequency is a result of the change in mass, and it also shows the relationship is linear. And um, so one important applica application of the bulk acoustic wave resonator is the bulk acoustic wave-based biosensor. It employs the so brief uh, equation that was just in introduced. So the biologic sample that is being tested attached to the piezoelectric bulk, which would have a natural resonance frequency. When the antibodies were binded and the mass were bind to the resonant surface, the overall mass increases, which causes the frequency drop, as shown in the figure on the right. So the bulk of acoustic wave resonators are also based on the piezoelectric effect which is the property processed by certain class of crystals to convert mechanical stress into electric displacement. The inverse also holds true, which means electric displacement can also be converted into mechanical stress. And this is called the inverse piezoelectric effect. Um, so, I so I would also like to briefly introduce the thin film bulk acoustic wave technology, which is also part of the existing technology. So the thin film uh, technology offers the following major advantages. So it is compatible with a range of substrates. It also enables uh, 
commerce integration and give wave confinement, and it is able to work with the wide range of materials. So the next section of the presentation, I'm going to hand it over to Kaush. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Phoebe. And uh, so the next section discusses how the uh, acoustic confinement structure of the existing the designs are available. And uh, yes, there are two uh, uh, existing designs of the acoustic resonators. Uh, in the top one, in the figure A, you could see that there is um, a top and a bottom electrode and a piezoelectric transducing unit, which is being sandwiched between them and an air cavity. And the bottom one has uh, the same resonating structure, but only differs that instead of air cavity, there is uh, a Bragg's reflector, an acoustic Bragg reflector introduced. So these reflecting mechanisms are to prevent the acoustic losses into the substrate because when you excite these resonating devices, uh, most of the sound, uh, most of the acoustic energy radiates into the substrate, which is nothing but the loss of the acoustic energy, which could not be useful in the sensing application. So these are the two acoustic uh, uh, resonating devices that are uh, majorly classified as thin film bulk acoustic resonators in the major designs. Um, yeah, the features of these uh, existing designs are uh, these uh, devices have an active area of several hundreds of microns and the operating resonant frequency is between a uh, few hundreds of megahertz to 2 to 2 to 2.5 gigahertz. And this means that these are, though they are very small compared to very macroscopic devices, but there is a still, there is still a lot of room to miniaturize these designs. And by miniaturization, one more thing we intend to achieve is to achieve high resonant frequencies, because if we are able to achieve high resonant frequencies, that means we, are, we would potentially be able to develop sensors which are very, very sensitive compared to the existing sensing technologies, compared to the existing resonating sensor technologies. Um, uh, Cool. Uh, so as I discussed that, the major objective of these projects is to uh, miniaturize uh, these existing bulk acoustic wave resonators. And to the thing that we wanted to propose was a nanoscale version of these thin film bulk acoustic resonators. Uh, to achieve this, we used lateral field excitation. Uh, lateral field excitation, as uh, you saw in the previous picture, there is a top electrode and bottom electrode. and a piezoelectric transducing unit, which is being sandwiched between them. But in this uh, project, as you will see in the coming slides, we have used uh, the lateral field excitation using a coplanar electrode arrangement, which would uh, excite the transducing layer laterally and not longitudinally, which would enable us to go for uh, thin films. Uh, by thin films, I mean uh, films in the range of nanoscale. Uh, for simulation, we have used uh, a film of thickness 200 nanometers, but uh, in reality, uh, I think we would be able to go far below this. So yes, by achieving, uh, we, it was just to enable higher sensitivities and also the active region that we have used for our device is few microns uh, that I would discuss. To design this device, we have used console multiphysics and I would discuss the boundary condition that we tried to use in the, to simulate the profile of these devices. Maybe can you go? Cool. The salient features of the device that we proposed, the active region that we used to design this uh, resonator uh, based sensor was two microns by two microns, uh, which is uh, opposed to several hundred microns in the existing sensor technologies. And the operating frequencies that we obtained uh, was between four to five gigahertz. So essentially, if you remember the formula that the Sobrace process, we would be able to detect masses smaller than several femtograms. So, which is actually uh, uh, far better than the existing uh, film, uh, thin film acoustic resonators. Yeah, and the thing that I discussed already that we have used lateral field excitation. Uh, it also helps to achieve higher sensitivities, but also to reduce the acoustic losses and gain high Q factors. Um, cool. So here is the proposed device structure that we used. Uh, so we have a coplanar electrodes arrangement, and then we have a piezoelectric layer beneath it. Uh, and then we have a silicon dioxide layer, which acts as a passivation layer uh, to prevent the acoustic losses. And then we have an air cavity to, uh, to prevent the acoustic energy from uh, getting radiated into the substrate. Uh, so yes, uh, as I discussed that the, this board design is laterally excited using the coplanar electrodes and uh, the lateral excitation results in the miniaturization of this device and which could enable us to uh, get higher operating frequencies. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. Um, so for the design of these sensors, we had used COMSOL multiphysics and the piezoelectric module was employed. Um, yeah, the analysis was done in the frequency domain and the material we used was zinc oxide. Zinc oxide was used because if we want to go in real time fabrication of this device, then zinc oxide is a really easy material based on the stoichiometric ratios uh, to form and also it's quite biocompatible. So if we want to go for a biosensor based on these uh, nanoscale bulk acoustic resonators, we just thought it would be uh, really ideal to use zinc oxide for simulation as well. Yes, so these were the boundary conditions that we used for these acoustic resonators. As we discussed, like in the amongst the coplanar electrodes, the left one was given the uh, uh, AC voltage of one volt, and the right one was given was grounded basically. And the edges we used a perfectly matched layer, which was um, then followed by fixed constraint. So the edges were mechanically fixed, and the air cavity in this was uh, given the free constraint using a console multiphysics so as to enable the vibration of the device. Um, cool. Um, so you could see the two dimensional model that we developed uh, using console again. And here we are showing the displacement profile. So once you uh, once you activate the device, you can see the oscillations very clearly uh, that we got. And uh, uh, you could see that the displacement that we got was uh, in like several picometers, which is better than the existing device because in the existing device, you get the uh, displacement of several uh, femtometers. So yeah, we get higher displacements. And also the one main thing you could see is most of the acoustic energy is constrained within the resonating structure. and you could not see much of losses. Um, since we have developed the model, there is a lot of work to be done to see what actually the Q factors are of these devices. But uh, for now, we have just decided to go for the displacement profile and uh, the impedance analysis that uh, I think I'll discuss in the next slide. Yeah, so this is one of the good news in this project that we have got uh, resonant frequencies beyond uh, four gigahertz. and. Um, you could see that there is a fundamental mode that has been contributed by the zinc oxide layer that, that is a transducing layer. And also there is another mode which we suspected to be contributed by the zinc oxide layer along with the silicon dioxide layer, which we are not yet sure about the second mode because uh, it requires a lot of experimental work and also a lot of uh, work to be done on that. But uh, we could clearly see that the resonating frequency of this device, the fundamental mode contributed by zinc oxide is around 4.1 gigahertz. That literally means we could uh, detect masses, uh, really very small masses, uh, which would be equal to the mass of a single virus, basically, which would be in several, several femtograms. And uh, if, this, if we, are, we are suspecting that the second mode, which we get at around 4.7 gigahertz, is by the zinc oxide layer with silicon dioxide layer, is the, if it is a dual mode, then Yes, it could be used for temperature measurement along with the mass measurement system. So yes, so the results that we were happy about was that we were able to get higher resonating frequencies than the existing design. And uh, uh, we were also able to get dual mode to some extent. So hopefully in future, if this device is successful, then we may go for the fabrication of this device and actually see how in real time this device behaves. Cool. Um, Thank you for listening and any questions? Um, Denisa, sorry, I think you have muted. Thank you, Phoebe. I didn't realize that. So yes, please, anyone, if you'd like to ask any questions. Uh, I have a question actually myself. Uh, how would you go for about fabricating these devices? What methods would you use? Um, I think we would go for uh, deposition techniques such as ALD because these films are really thin. Uh, so we would go for the deposition of the transducing layers inside using ALD and for etching. Uh, to form the air cavity, we would go something like deep reactive ion etching. Mm -hmm, and for electrodes, we would go for lithography. Thank you. I, I have a question, if I may. Yes. 
Um, where the resonators have been used to detect, for example, um, biological um, molecules, what's the proposal for cleaning the sensors so they can be reset? Okay, yeah, so there are, I mean, there are actually very few startup companies that are coming out of Cambridge, which are trying to commercialize these kind of acoustic devices. So even they are in the initial phases to actually realize that what are the, what could be the potential methods to use for cleaning. But uh, I think you could go for like solvent based cleaning. So the surface of this acoustic devices could, I mean, if you do, if you use metal passivation for this thing, you could use uh, like solvents to clean the surfaces, something like, as simple as acetone. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions? Uh, if no, we would like to thank the speakers. Thank you, Phoebe and 